did you have any input in what the artist put on your helmet or did you describe to the artist and then they just come up with it? How does that work? Yeah, so it, I mean, I, I'm not 100% sure on what the other artists do and how their thought processes are. Um, but with mine, his name is Ian Johnson. He's amazing and super talented. And so with both my helmets, I've got um, the one with a dragon on the top and I've got the, my other Olympic one um, that has like a rib cage with the, the glowing maple leaf in it where your heart should be. And so both of those, I gave him some ideas and he just ran with it. And he's such a good artist that whatever he was going to come up with, I knew I was going to love anyways. And so um, I had full confidence in him. So I definitely did have some, some input um, into both of those helmets. I can imagine it will be immensely difficult to get into the Olympic because it's su such a competitive sport. How do you, like, how do you sort of like make sure that you're in the right head space when you get potentially not getting your medal at the beginning, you know, rejections, failures, fears? How do you kind of like balance all of that? Are there any like, specific things that Jane Channel does <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like I, I definitely in order for me to to be in that moment as best I can be um I always focus on the process and not the outcome because the outcome is a product of your process and so therefore the outcome is actually out of your control because you're every it depends on what everybody else is doing or what like how they perform as well. And so if I can perform at the best I can possibly be at uh, while executing everything I want at the same time, I'm focusing on that process. And so I, the outcome, regardless of what happens, I know that I've tried my best. I've done everything I possibly could and whatever happens, happens. And so it's, for me, it's definitely a mindset um, that I learned actually from track and field um, because I was a sprinter. And so whenever I was sprinting and I knew I needed to run a certain time and I would tell myself at the beginning of a race, I need to run this time. I never would because I'd be too, I'd be jumping five steps ahead when I need to focus on step one. And so that's the same thing with skeleton in that I, I could for sure aim. My goal might be to be top five or top 10, whatever it might be. Uh, but the actual placing is out of my mind. I'm, I'm focusing on the process of um, corner one, corner two, corner three to get down the track. One of the other things that I really have been very impressed with you and some of the other Olympians and Paralympics um, is the involvement and the different um, online experience on Airbnb. I am a, you know, an avid traveler and I love traveling, but well, you can tell that COVID does not really help. So I've actually met several um, really cool people on through the online Airbnb experience. And I also learned that some of these Olympians and Paralympics also does mentoring through classroom champions. Can you tell me a little bit about why you think that is such an important thing for you guys to share that with our, you know, next generation? Yeah, uh, it's amazing. So Classroom Champions is an amazing organization where uh, they pair classrooms in quite often underprivileged neighborhoods. Uh, they pair them with Olympians or just athletes um, to help mentor them throughout the entire school year because you can go into a school and chat with them for an hour and your impression with them lasts for maybe the day, maybe a week if you're lucky. Whereas if you're that constant uh, figure within their classroom throughout the school year, you're able to have uh, a better connection with them. You're able to impact their, their lives essentially throughout the entire school year. And so um, classroom champions will, we're paired with these classrooms and we have topics uh, that we hit each month throughout the school year, such as goal setting or perseverance or feedback or the importance of uh, helping out your community and how that will in the end build everybody, uh, build everybody up to be better. And so 
I've been with them for, oh my goodness, four or five years now. I can't remember. And I absolutely love them. They are like, as much as I help these, these, this next generation in the classroom, um, they help me. So as well, so just knowing when I'm out on tour, if I'm having a bad day or anything like that, like I know that there's a whole classroom, this whole school, whatever it may be, that's just, they're cheering for me. And like, regardless of the outcome, like they're going to be so excited and so proud of me. And it's, it's just so heartwarming, uh, to be able to give back to a community like that. And so, um, classroom champions is amazing. Um, so if anyone out there is curious about it, um, don't hesitate to Google them and check them out. Um, amazing organization. With the Tokyo Olympic just finished, how is it, you know, faring for Winter Olympics now? Yeah, it's a, it's a super unique situation because since um, for a while now, the Olympics have always been uh four years apart or two years apart summer for winter this year the summer olympics and paralympics they're still on and just ending and the winter olympics and winter paralympics are getting ready to go for february and so there's a ton of excitement that's going on around the summer olympics and and everything and so to be able to build off of that momentum to build off of that excitement um, and just togetherness that is the Olympics is able to do and to bring is it's going to be incredible. And I'm so excited um, to be able to have the opportunity to be able to try out for um, team Canada again.